An Advent Meditation from the book Donkey Bells, Advent and Christmas, Stories, Traditions, and Meditations from Catherine Doherty. Our Lady's Pregnancy and Ours All of Advent, you know, is really Our Lady's Feast. Yesterday I was thinking about her pregnancy. She was told that the Holy Spirit would overshadow her. She was a virgin and did not know any man, so she must have waited and then felt life within herself. I thought of this fantastic situation, God imprisoned in the womb of a woman for nine solid months. Such a stupendous thought. It sort of blows your mind. I said to myself, what is it that we are lacking today? I included myself in this question. And the answer came, I think it is the ability to be pregnant with God. Yes, that's it. For it wasn't Mary alone who was pregnant with him. It's you and I who should be pregnant with him. At baptism, our soul, or our heart as we say, is opened to becoming pregnant with God. We have entered into his kingdom. We're small. We're little. We don't understand much. But the years pass by quickly, and we begin to be faced with the reality of our baptism in Christ. And we say to ourselves, or we should, Am I pregnant with Christ? There is a period in our lives in which we must become pregnant because pregnancy means growth. Eventually, this Christ whom we have accepted into the womb of our heart is going to become a child, and then he will grow and grow and grow, for God needs room. You see, having given birth to him in faith, we must be ready for the next step, to become an in. These are facets of Advent that are so immense that we can barely absorb them. To be a womb, to be pregnant with Christ, to allow him to grow and to expand our hearts under his grace, these are thoughts we can meditate on for years. Of course, if we allow Christ to grow in us, he, like the Good Samaritan, is going to bring a lot of wounded people into the inn of our heart. In fact, knowing the size of our heart and being able to enlarge it if we let him, He will make our pregnancy become a fantastic gift to the world. Think about it. Becoming pregnant with Christ. You know, it shakes me. I don't know if it shakes you, but I was thinking of the incredible situation of God being welcomed into a human womb. And to do that, he needs our availability. He needs our emptiness. Let me share with you what Carol Hauselander wrote about emptiness in her book, The Read of God, which is one of the best books on Advent. Quote, that virginal quality, which for want of a better word I call emptiness, is not a formless emptiness, a void without meaning. On the contrary, it has a shape, a form given to it by the purpose for which it is intended. It is emptiness, like the hollow in a reed, the narrow, riftless emptiness which can have only one destiny, to receive the piper's breath and to utter the song that is in his heart. It is the emptiness like the hollow of the cup, shaped to receive water or wine. It is emptiness like that of the bird's nest, built in a round, warm ring to receive the little bird. The pre-advent emptiness of Our Lady's purposeful virginity was indeed like those three things. She was a reed through which the eternal love was to be piped as a shepherd's song. She was the flower-like chalice into which the purest water of humanity was to be poured, mingled with wine, changed to the crimson blood of love, and lifted up in sacrifice. She was the warm nest rounded to the shape of humanity to receive the divine little bird." Yes, that's what Our Lady was, and that's what we must be too. We must be all these things in order to receive the child. Meditate on this. Let an image assemble before your eyes so that you can think of it. Slowly, your desire to know, your urge to manipulate, will fall away like worn-out garments. Many things will fall away. Then you will be empty and able to receive the incredible. I highly recommend the book Donkey Bells by Catherine Doherty, and all of Catherine's writings are amazing. I've read them um, since I was young, and they've helped so much in my spiritual formation. She was raised in the in Russia, in the East, so she was raised Orthodox, but they that's really all they knew, so they were very fervent Orthodox, and she... Um, 
just she tells story after story of how their faith permeated their whole life in Russia, their whole culture. It's amazing. And how she brought that when she came to live in the West after the communist takeover of Russia and she and her husband fled the country and they ended up in the United States and eventually in Canada. Um, but she she became, you know, became Catholic when she understood that, you know, she needed to be in the church, um, living her faith. And she brings the two traditions of the East and the West together in such a beautiful way in her spiritual writings and councils. And it just makes it so enriching, like how you, you see that you need to breathe with both lungs, like Pope St. John Paul II said about the East and the West, the church needs to breathe with her two lungs. And um, Catherine would have just loved that, loved that so much. Um, and she was a great example of it. And she lived a very holy life and um, started the Madonna House and Friendship House apostolates across the United States and Canada. Um, she was married and had a son. Um, and then later in life was called to do this apostolic work and live as the poor and serve the poor. And she did it um, for many years and ended up living her last years out as a hermit at the Madonna house in Cumbermere, Ontario, which is sort of the mother hub of the world, you know, operations. Um, cause now it's international. Um, she, uh, so she lived as a hermit, a, a pustinik is the Russian word, um, on the, the property in a little house and, um, and died eventually at a, a good old age. And she's actually being considered for sainthood. She's uh, been named a servant of God. And so her cause is in progress. And it's just her gift for storytelling is just um, wonderful. It's so fun to read her books because she spins stories to illustrate different like spiritual truths, but she also tells many like real life stories. And so there's many biographies you can read of her or, you know, collections of her work. Madonna House has a website and they sell her books, but you can find them secondhand around um, Pustinia, P-O-U-S-T-I-N-I-A. I can put a link below, but that that's sort of like the place to start with her spiritual writings. It's very foundational and it kind of builds a whole series of books that she wrote. And uh, yeah, it's just, I really recommend it. She's helped me so much. And uh, I hope that she can become a friend of yours as well. And that you can be inspired by her life and stories. And, and just, she'll really help you to enjoy your Advent experience and Christmas. This book, um, it's not a its not a huge book, The Donkey Bells, but, and the little sections are short. And the stories, I think even your kids would enjoy. So I'll probably be reading it out loud to my children as I get to that part in the book this advent and just um, go through those together as a family and I hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, are interested in looking at more of Catherine Doherty's work and I'll link a little bit more like to her some short bios and things of her below so you can do some more reading on your own and um, anyway thank you so much for tuning into this video I hope you're having a very blessed advent and that you continue to do so um, if you are interested, I'll have links below to my um, Patreon and Ko-fi.com donation pages. Um, if you want to support my making future videos and content that you can enjoy, um, that would be very much appreciated. And keep my videos ad-free. I'm determined to do that <laughs> for your sake. Um, so anyway, God bless you and thank you so much. We will see you again soon.